All right. Um, well, I'm Lars. I'm back. And uh, this time, I want to talk about Roadrunner. Roadrunner is a new type of page editor for Wagtail. And actually, it's not really new. So we've been using it in a different form for a while. But um, because this code is all custom, it's really hard to update. And uh, so we made a rewrite. And in this rewrite, we decided to use all the, the Wagtail fields as they are. So um, use the actual code. This uh, talk uh, is um, in three um, sections. The first section is the Zen of Roadrunner. And uh, it explains the motivation behind Roadrunner. But um, I think this uh, kind of talk uh, would be a little bit boring right now. You've been sitting here for a couple of hours. So uh, I think I'll skip this. And uh, we'll just go right to the demo so I can show you how it works. And um, after that, we can go into the technical details. Now, the giving the demo will be a bit difficult because, um, yeah, it's not my computer. <laughs> so uh, I hope that the screenshots that I took are enough to give you an idea. If not, yeah, please uh, hook me up after the talk and I can show you the demo on my computer. So let's have a look. <coughs> um, the first thing that I'd like to mention is that Roadrunner is just a new stream field type. So um, it's not really an entire UI or templates or whatever. It's just a new stream field type. If you use it, you can use it just like any other stream field. But it's also possible to have a global registry of blocks and all the blocks that you reg register globally, they will be available if you use the field without any arguments. If you do use arguments, well, only those fields become available. Um. So let's um, make a website. In this website, um, we have two columns. The left one carries the page title, some text, and a call to action button. The right column has a complex widget of what looks like a display of the effectiveness of some social media campaign. Now, let's have a look at the page editor. So this is it. What's going on here? There are a couple of, a couple of things going on. The first thing that stands out is that our blocks are not laid out vertically in a linear fashion, but in columns just like we are seeing in the front end. The second thing that stands out is uh, something that looks like a bootstrap grid selector. You can see uh, the little display and the green squares. That's a grid selector. So the third thing that stands out is that we are not seeing any form controls. In fact, we are seeing only a preview of the blocks. Uh, because we are laying out the blocks in columns, it would be very cumbersome to render the edi editing controls directly, and it would become cluttered really quick. So um, we choose to uh, render just previews for a more compact representation of a block, and uh, it can be easily recognized. It can be easily recognized by the user where they should click to go to the editing interface. This uh, social media widget would actually be a couple of form fields where you might have to enter some account info to uh, pull the data from some external service. And it's not really easy to recognize. So in this form with a preview, it's actually much uh, simpler to find uh, what you want to change on your page. And it can also be much more compact. Wagtail uh, pages can easily become complex. It depends. Uh, there's a limit to what you can do with stream fields. If you push it and you nest things too deep, yeah, 
the, the amount of scrolling you have to do and the amount of pluses you are seeing on the screen can easily be overwhelming. So let's have a look at how this preview thing works. Um, I'm not sure if anyone is aware, but um, Wagtail allows you to customize the admin interface by, um, by specifying the form template in the meta options. Uh, if you do that, this template will be used instead of the default Wagtail controls. Um, and that's nice to have, because even though the page editor is all JavaScript, you can simply write some uh, Django templates to modify the JavaScript front end. That's a really good idea because it lowers the bar for a lot of uh, people. So we decided the same should be true for Roadrunner Preview to make this as accessible as possible. So here in the meta options you can see we specified preview template and uh, this is what will be rendered in the Roadrunner admin page editor. Here is an example of an actual preview template for a block built into Roadrunner. Stefan has been working hard this week to build a lot of previews so we could uh, do this demo properly. And uh, here we can see that he has just written a bootstrap modal window and he is using exactly the same variables as you would use in the form uh, template. So here we render the value of the uh, fields with using render form, which might be a little strange, but um, yeah, it's, it's not different from uh, using form template. So this is uh, what it looks like previewed in the admin. So um, y you can just, uh, it looks just like it would if you opened the pop-up. So it's, it's really clear. Um, for this uh, purpose, we include a scoped version of Bootstrap 5. So uh, Wagtail uses an old version of Bootstrap. I'm not sure if this has changed in Wagtail 3, uh, but um, we are still on Wagtail 1.6, so we're making this first working with, uh, with that version. But for the front end, we use a lot of Bootstrap 5, so we also want to use it in the previews. So here we scope it in uh, the dot .preview class. So everywhere where you have a class dot .preview, you can use Bootstrap 5, and it will be styled correctly without conflicting with the built-in Bootstrap. Yes. Okay. Suppose you are really lazy. Um, you can also uh, not write a template and um, specify which fields you just want to see. And uh, it will render them below each other in the page editor. Mm. So um, we wrote some widgets in JavaScript for some uh, difficult um, base uh, um, fields in Wagtail. So uh, inputs, images, and um, rich text. So these can, uh, if it's uh, one of those fields, you can use this approach and it will render as a preview, so not as an input or an editable field. Now, let's talk about those columns. Um, when using the Roadrunner field, all the machinery to lay out your blocks in columns is added. So everything you're seeing here with the, the bootstrap selector and the columns, it is added to the existing Wagtail code. Um, the grid selector can be used to change the width of a column for a certain breakpoint. We currently support three breakpoints, mobile, tablet, and full screen. So now I'd like to give a demo, but I can't because this is not my computer. So I have to explain how it works. Uh, in the top right, you can see that there are three icons. These are floating, and they can actually be used to switch the display. So if I click on the mobile phone there, everything switches to the mobile breakpoint, which are usually set to 12 columns, 
and everything is below each other. So we can quickly um, see how this page would render on mobile or on tablet or on full screen. If I click one of the um, grid chooser blocks, the column will become wider and um, the columns will be rearranged following the bootstrap grid. Um, to, um, to edit some of these uh, um, blocks, you just click them and the model will open showing you the editing interface. So it looks like this. Right here, we have actually also um, changed the form field. That's why we have two columns here with on the left uh, the stuff that has to do with the buttons and uh, on the right the stuff that has to do with the content of the pop-up. You can click apply or save as draft to save and uh, continue editing. Um, yeah, technical details. It's too bad that I can't demo anything. But uh, that's all the screenshot I've got, unfortunately. So, Telepath. Telepath is a library in Wagtail, uh, which um, is the bridge between the stuff that is in Python and the stuff that is in the page editor JavaScript. And uh, we use it to uh, change the, the workings of the JavaScript and also the Python for some blocks. So here's um, something called an adapter. And the adapter is used to uh, specify um, how which JavaScript should be used in the page editor to handle a certain type of field. So right here in this screenshot, you can see that the image chooser block adapter will be used for the image chooser block which is a built-in existing block. Uh, in fact, this image chooser block adapter will now be used for anything that subclasses image chooser block. So Telepath works based on an inheritance. So if you want to change everything, you just take the upper base class, register a new adapter, and um, it will work. So right here we say that we want to use our own code to handle the image chooser blocks. And um, we have also to register our JavaScript code on the JavaScript side. So the class that's mentioned here is roadrunner.fields.imageChooserBlock definition. And in JavaScript, we have to also register with, with telepath our class. Roadrunner.fields.imageChooserBlock definition. So now telepath knows about this class and it can use it to um, render image chooser blocks. So let's look at how the preview is um, handled. So um, the only thing that we are actually changing is that we render the, the original Wagtail form in a modal and render a preview, which is, is something extra that is also um, something you have to make when you make a block. So here's the preview for the image chooser block definition. Um, we, um, this looks like React, but really, if you want to reuse the Wagtail JavaScript, you can't use React because they have to render in a placeholder. Right here, you see the fir first argument to render preview is a placeholder, and that's a div, and it will get replaced with the code uh, that the widget sh should render. So. If you use React, you, you don't ha have control over this rendering phase, and you would have to do all kinds of crazy tricks with refs to uh, have the widgets render in, uh, in JavaScript. So we are using JSX here, but without React. There's a little library called JSX Render, and um, it, it lets you use JSX and immediately um, create uh, DOM elements. So to me, that looks a lot nicer, and you can also create components in JSX uh, instead of writing uh, strings or um, making DOM elements uh, using jQuery. So in this case, um, we render a fragment with an image tag, and we use the preview image.url, the width and the height. So it's not really 
complex. And uh, it also renders a new placeholder for if another field needs to render below this uh, block. Um, yeah, so how do we uh, add preview to stream block? Because stream block is uh, the, the field that we are changing and subclassing. We have to enhance its functionality with, with, uh, um, with preview. So in this case, we need to override stream block with a different class that adds this functionality. So this is the code. We um, change the render uh, method <coughs> of the stream block. Um, we, um, uh, we render a model in JSX and we, we call on the line, uh, let's see, where is it? Below the JSX it says, Oh, I can just read the comments, that's better. So first we render the wrapper template with placeholders for the preview and the child element. So now we render something with two placeholders. Uh, then we will uh, render the, the original Wagtail field in one of the placeholders that is inside the model. And the next thing we do is we render the preview in the other placeholder, that's it. So uh, we keep everything Wagtail does, we just change the context it is rendered in. <coughs> so the other thing that we are doing is if you read the Telepath do documentation, there's a small mention of that it's possible to have a local registry of adapters <coughs> and uh, we actually use that for Roadrunner field. So uh, in Roadrunner field, we want to modify a couple of things in Wagtail, so uh, for example, the stream field block. But not all pages are Roadrunner pages, so we don't want to <laughs> modify it for the entirety of uh, the application. So we actually have an, uh, our own uh, JS <coughs> context in which we uh, can override certain stuff from Wagtail, the couple of blocks we need to alter. So Roadrunner is open source, you can find it on our Gip, GitHub of our company. It's still in development. I was actually planning to have it completely finished right now, but hey, that didn't work. But we uh, have enough so we could demo it now, which I cannot do. So if uh, you are interested, you can uh, put a star on the GitHub and uh, I will notify you, uh, of you will get notified when uh, the dot one release is done. And uh, the demo project that I cannot demo is also on GitHub. So if you want to check it out, if you're interested, you can also do that. If there's something that doesn't work while you try that or you're interested or have questions, you can send me an email at lars at hybitsa.nl. And that's it, unfortunately. Thank you, Lars. Do we have any questions for Lars? There you go. Yes. Uh, how did you come up with the name Roadrunner? Yeah, th so this project already existed. <laughs> so somebody chose this name and the, the reasoning behind it, I wouldn't know, but it's a bird, right? So. Uh, have you feedback from users? Have people been working with this? No, because this is the new version. So the old version, we have a lot of feedback and that's all fixed in this version. So the previews that you're seeing now, they actually didn't exist in the old version. You only saw the name, uh, the type of the block and then also in columns organized, which is very compact, but you don't have a clue which element you should click to edit. But uh, this is not in production yet because I still have a couple of uh, user stories to complete. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So have you managed to make this work with commenting? Uh, I don't know, because uh, I think commenting actually still works, because I still see the, the symbols uh, there, and because the original code, it, it, there's n nothing has changed, so it should still have that connection. But um, I didn't test it lately, I tested it ju at the beginning of development, and I, was, I found it strange that it, it did anything. So it looks like it actually, st st it, it used to still work. 
Yeah, that's interesting. I, I was just, um, yeah, I was curious about the rich text editor and the modal particularly, whether that um, still applies to it. But yeah. It yeah, because it's still there. You so we render the preview, but we render it using JavaScript. It, mm. it just transforms the draft.js um, uh, bare uh, JSON. But all the, ori the original stream is still there. It's just rendered in the model. It's on the page. It has the same ID, ID everything uh, still yeah. present. But the uh, commenting uses, uh, oh well, I won't go on too, too much detail, but it uses a content path system to identify where, where the comment applies. All oh right. And, and if your modal is in a different part of the page, if you don't pass that in, I'm interested in whether the comment will be, yeah. will look like it's in the right place to start with, but when you save it, will it go somewhere else? That, that was what I was interested yeah, in. Yeah, all right. So I don't know. Yeah, we can check it. <laughs> yeah, we can see. Cool. Thank you. All right, thank all right. you, Lars.